Healthy Nation. It's our weekly educational webinar. And today, we're this is for partners. And today, the topic is the XP migration strategies. And uh, it's sponsored by Lenovo, DNH, Uma, Carbonite, uh, the pocket, uh, uh, the peer groups at SMB Nation. And a little bit of housekeeping up front. Be sure to ask, ask your questions using the chat feature, which uh, I'll get those questions. I'm happy to take them as we go. Second thing is this webinar will, in all likelihood, run um, a little bit over. Uh, it's got a lot of content, so brace yourself. We're going to try and keep it as efficient as we can, but I suspect it's going to run just a little bit over. The webinar is being recorded, so you'll get a link for replay at a future date. And take a look at the, uh, the events we have coming up. So xpmigrations.com, click on events. We're coming to a city near you soon. And then, as always, read the SMB Nation website for daily news and blogs and commentary. So with that said, uh, let's just jump right into it and do some introductions. Let's see if we can get the screen working today. Uh, the hero slide, folks, if I haven't met you, my name is Harry Brailsford, 25 years in the SMB IT Pro world, wrote a bunch of books on small business server. Next slide, SMB Nation. If you haven't met SMB Nation, we're a community that built uh, built itself on rock and roll and small business server. And like like all technologies, we're evolving to go with the times. Um, and why don't we do introductions right now? So we have Jay Weiss, uh, one of our trainers on the line. Jay, introduce yourself, please. This is Jay Weiss from sunny Southern California, from Computer HMO. And I am here to assist in whatever way I can. All right. And then Bill Hirsch, you're here from DNH and a subject matter expert. We're going to talk about the combat kit in a little while with you. Bill Hirsch, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Bill Hirsch. I'm the solutions coordinator here at DNH. I am um, part of part of a team that works with reseller enablement. My job is to assist our resellers in understanding opportunities and how to best take advantage of them. So I'm I'm here to do whatever I can, just like Jay. All right, excellent. And then Brooke Elgis. Brooke, are you on the line? Go ahead and introduce yourself and talk about what you do at XP Migrations, which is everything. Hello, I'm Brooke Elgis. I am the project man manager and recruiter at XP Migrations. I answer questions. I do the event coordinating. I help with any of the new talent that we have, getting them where they need to get, taking the online exam. I have a lot of fun, a lot of fun. <laughs> to say the least. So, mm -hmm. folks, if you if you look at the thank you thank you folks if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the million mile tour that we did back in mid decade for small business server and to get people to pass the uh, small business specialist exam. And that is kind of what we're doing. We're we're we're, we're kind of doing it all over again with Windows XP migrations. As you'll see, it's a fantastic opportunity for you to get going and. Um, you know, the, the intent today was to, to open up our content to a broad audience, and, and we still think it will be very compelling for you to attend the local shows as well. Let's, let's get right into it. First thing I want to have you do is download the Windows XP Migration Guide at the uh, SMB Nation site. Go to Content Magazine, pick Magazine 8.1. This is part of uh, your study guide for those that want to participate in the xpmigrations.com co-op and uh, do some work for us, but anybody can benefit from this migration guide. Next slide. We'll go pretty quickly through a lot of the slides, folks, because we uh, a, a lot of us know what's going on. April 8th, the road closes. Windows XP, Office 03, Server 03, including SBS 03, end of support. Detour ahead. What do I do now? So here, here's what we're seeing, is, is we're seeing um, in, in the real world over 90% of the, uh, the motion will be to a new laptop, desktop, or device. Uh, it's quite actually reminded just in the other city in Portland the other night to talk about devices as well as laptop and desktop such as the tablet. There's a couple choices. Windows 8.1, we're going to talk about that. Windows 7, that seems to have the hot hand. The new Office 13. Folks, I use Office 13 as a Microsoft partner. I love searching my calendar. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, I'm, I'm pro Office 13 Pro, if that makes sense. And then finally, the role of the server. 
um, when you introduce a migration, you introduce disruption. And so it puts everything in play. And this would actually be a whole other tour. In fact, that's a, that's a good idea. So Brooke and Jay and Bill, why don't you make a mental note of that? That, that might be the next tour, is the role of the server. All right, so the opportunity. So Spiceworks, um, a community not unlike ours, did a survey and showed that uh, a majority of its uh, devices in the roughly 25 to, uh, I, I'm sorry, 20 to uh, 250 desktop space were Windows XP. Now remember, this is a small private survey. It was done this spring. That number would clearly be different today because we're involved in the migration effort away from XP. But it's significant in that it shows the opportunity. There's a lot of market measurements, and I'll show you the next one in a moment. Now, look at the 70% of XP will occur with new purchases. This is Microsoft's official view, is that um, Microsoft, uh, the 70% would reflect people who have an OEM or retail license, and they would have to purchase a new PC. 30% relates to um, that uh, Microsoft uses, uh, the, these are people that have volume licensing and could do an in-place upgrade. Now, could and should and would are very different concepts. Here's another market measurement that's more recent, uh, showing Windows XP worldwide um, down to about 31, 32 percent. I would say that's, that's believable. It's a declining number, folks. Microsoft's announcement, the official announcement. What I would highlight here is uh, clearly you can read the slide, and, 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 and again, most people on the call know about this. What I would highlight here is the SP3 in paragraph 2. So you're going to see a slide a little bit later on that, that talks about that. But SP3 is what we're talking about. Windows XP, Service Pack 1, and Service Pack 2 are already not supported. The idea being that you would apply service packs. So it's technically SP3. These always make great exam questions. Why? I'm going to go through about five pillar messages now. So these are pillar messages you can use to have a conversation with your customers about leaving XP. Number one is security, and that shouldn't surprise you. USA Today covered this story back in August. And it was kind of cool. Um, for those of you that don't know, it was an honor and pleasure for me over the summer, roughly May, June, July, I served Microsoft as a vendor on an OEM team dealing with the XP migration matter. And we are pretty thrilled in August when we kind of made the cover of Rolling Stone. To, 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 to make USA Today with the Windows XP story is the number one opportunity is uh, that's, that's really something to hit a mainstream journal. The rest of you would know uh, the, the trade journals, so E-Week. Uh, the criminals are awaiting April 9th. And uh, Computer World. Computer World has a zero-day vulnerability forever comment. Look to the right, and um, we're, next week we're going to launch a contest uh, about show us your XP photos. And if you look to the right, this was taken a week ago at Seattle Tacoma Airport as I was preparing for a flight. This is a kiosk using embedded Windows XP that had blue screen. And this is a huge market, uh, retail point of sale, uh, kiosk, but the embedded XP market is, is a significant part of that large worldwide number. So I took that with my camera. And, and, and I guess, you know, let me go back. I guess the point is you will be impacted by the XP deadline. Okay, it could be public services. It could be announced a little bit on the Washington State Ferry System. They have these mounted monitors for advertising and announcements. Um, and, and XP, you will be impacted by the April 8th deadline. Some people like to say, you know, my clients don't have XP, blah, blah, blah. And, and I come back at them and say, well, you will be impacted. We just talked about security. Now let's talk about functionality. I was just down in Portland earlier this week meeting with Intel. Intel's Haswell chipset does not support XP, and you can think of it as a building blocks. Um, uh, Tony Bradley's comments in Windows Secret below is, is pretty good. The OS is, in fact, broken. And what Tony's getting at is the building blocks for the Windows XP security model is not, um, Bill, I'm looking for a, where you're probably more of a hardware guy than I. 
I want to say it's not congruent, it's not compatible. Um, what it, it, what it, language would you use, Bill? <laughs> it, it, it's not supportive. The, 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 the hardware uh, vendors, the manufacturers, are not basically considering XP at all when they look at what they need to do to make hardware work. So for any, any yeah. particular little issues or quirks that, that XP would have required that a hardware manufacturer may have worked around previously, they're not going to now. So if, if there's if there's something going on with your XP and you try to put it on a new motherboard, it's, it's going to barf. It's not going to work. It's going to give you an issue. There you go. Thank yeah, you, Bill. And I would I would add one thing to that, Harry. Up, oh, up. Oh, we got the magician on the line, folks. If you have a chance to see Jay on our worldwide tour, please do. <laughs> Jay is going to be in Las Vegas and Phoenix right after Thanksgiving. So if you have a chance, it's, uh, he's, he's, he's a ton of fun. All right. So we talked about functionality. We talked about security. Let's talk about productivity. So with productivity, uh, Intel actually paid for this study. And what, what, uh, they used TechIle. TechIle is actually our researcher for our magazine. And we have a long relationship with Honorog and his team. So Intel hired TechIle. And they came back with numbers that should be pretty apparent. Number, again, it's not my style to read the screen to you, but let's just take Jay's wage. Jay, I'm going to pick on you again. So Jay makes $10 an hour, and that's after the, the, the recent raise. $10 Thank an hour. Thank you for that raise. You're, you're welcome, Jay. You're welcome. So 2,000 hours a year. Let's just pick a number that Jay could work. So 2,000 hours a year times $10. And now you can do some some silly math. You, you can sit there and go, okay, the older mach older machines run slower. Agreed? Agreed. So if Jay's losing upwards of uh, 30 minutes a day of productivity because of wait state and boot time and just productivity losses, we can now assign a real value to that. And that's in part how you get to these numbers. Um, Bill, over at D&H, how, how, how do you guys synthesize or analyze the productivity matter beyond kind of what I already have on the screen? The, the challenge we have there is, is trying to find an average for, for across the board, but in most cases we, we follow the same, uh, the same uh, sources that you do. We use Honorog as well. Um, yep. I've also done a, a fair amount of digging out there and we find that, that a number of, of hardware manufacturers are, are actively pointing out how much the difference is and I've got to tell you that the 1.8 times user productivity cost is, is the lowest I've seen thus far. Most of them are in the high twos or low threes. There's, there's a yep. lot of, of personal productivity lost to an old machine. Yeah, yeah, a absolutely. You, you know, guys, it's, it's essentially we inherently know this, and then what TechIL has done is assigned a number to it. And, and so, again, not a huge debate going on here. I, I, I just think, of, you, you know, think of, uh, I'll just offer my spouse when she uses her outdated laptop and the speed at which it runs is very frustrating. And when we got her a new laptop, she was happy. It's in happy wife is happy life. So let's move on. Okay. So we've talked about the productivity, the functionality, and the security. Now we're going to talk about economics, and this may surprise you. Little trivia question. I'm not really here to test you today, but uh, the high tech was actually enacted as part of which act? Anyone want to guess on the line? My panelists, Brooke or Jay or Bill. Anyone want to guess I got it. before I reveal the answer? Okay, go ahead. It's the A R A. Letter D. Yep, you got it. All right, next we'll slide, do please. It, Bill. All right, now while you're thinking about this, and again, I'm talking, uh, actually I'm talking about compliance right here, excuse me. Economics comes up next. This is compliance, my fourth pillar message. Oops, hang on gang, I gotta let Astro, the company mascot in. There we go, Astro, thanks for joining the webinar. Our Springer Spaniel, you'll see Astro prominently featured at SMB Nation over the last several years. So, um, I wanna talk about this photo over on the right. What's occurring? is I took that on a Saturday night two Saturdays ago. My son is completing a Boy Scout project. I had to run up to Home Depot towards the end of the day to get some quick setting concrete. 
I go to pay and there's Windows XP on the point of sale system. And the lady in the background was startled. You know, why, why, why are you taking photos? What's up? And I got to talking to her. And she kind of said, oh, yeah, that's XP. And, and she said it, and it wasn't a, a term of endearment, the way she kind of uh, expressed herself. Well, I'll tell you this. What it means is that the general counsel and the legal department at Home Depot cannot be happy at all about the situation with April 8th coming up. And they have point of sale systems nationwide, wide running Windows XP. And the reason is, do, 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 payment credit, payment card industry data security standards, or PCI. Okay. And if we go to the next slide, and I know some people on the phone uh, on, on the on the webinar deal with that uh, with PCI issues. If if you're not into the compliance world, just go to that red text and go to the right, willful neglect. And so there are law firms that are in the business, kind of like patent trolls and class action lawsuit filers. There are law firms that want to have a conversation with the like of, likes of Home Depot on April 9th. They can make money capitalizing on this compliance issue because Home Depot would arguably be engaging in willful neglect. Another one that uh, was brought to my attention in my research was Charles Schwab. Uh, started the year with 13,000 Windows XP machines and 400 offices that act like little uh, SMBs. And that, that's, that's, that's wrong on April 9th. If a bank, Charles Schwab, a financial institution, is on Windows XP and, you know, hopefully there's no hackers on the line today, guys, who are listening to this. Um, Bill, I, I, I don't know, has DNH kind of gotten into the compliance messaging? Have you gone there? We are we are starting that message um, this month. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up because the two the two places we're focusing are financial services, including banking um, and insurance, for that matter, and healthcare. Because a lot of our customers deal with small retail shops, deal with um, small small doctors' offices and such, and they have no idea what kind of legal ramifications there are to not upgrading these machines, to not taking these old machines offline. That's right. That's it's right. huge opportunity. And that's right. And Jay, computer HMO, you kind of niche in some of the medical area. I think you uh, have uh, some conversations with people doing medical tests and so on. Any? It, would, would you like to add a comment here or a noise? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. But no, actually, I have uh, I have a client that's an attorney, and uh, you know, as it relates to the credit card stuff. Uh, you know, when they find something that they can do that's easy and a large number, they take it on with a vengeance, where they just start sending out letters going, you know, you're 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 going you're going to be sued for not adhering to the credit card laws, and it was incredible to watch them go after you know the big players like Target and and uh, the Gap and and different places like that because they weren't adhering to the credit card rules and regulations. So uh, this XP migration is just another another example of where we're going to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll wrap it up this way. Is uh, And Brooke, hang in there, by the way. I haven't forgotten about you. We, we get to Brooke a little bit later in the webinar uh, when we mm -hmm. talk about what we do. But um, I look at it this way, that a democracy and a free market you know, it's it's messy stuff, guys. It's 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 not pretty, um, but uh, it's the best we got. And so, Jay, that's exactly right. There are people that are going to capitalize on the disruption um, or disruptions in different ways, and that's kind of why we're here today. We want you to capitalize on the disruptions of the migrations related to uh, XP, Server 03, and Office 03. So we just had a compliance message. That's pillar number four. Let's go to pillar number five, and I'll let the panelists uh, go ahead and read that, everybody, and I'll let the panelists answer. Give me your best choice. Jay, you know the answer, so you have to recuse yourself. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> e, all of the above. <laughs> Brooke or Bill, you want to take a shot at this tax code provision. We're talking about economics. I'm going to take a wild guess on letter D again. 
Okay. Oops, and I think I say it at the bottom. Look at me. Never could write a very good exam, folks. All right. <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, here's the deal. <laughs> Section 179, um, it, it, it's been pretty interesting. Microsoft itself really wasn't aware of this. Intel really wasn't aware of this in the meeting the other day. And, and I get that. I, I, I'm not asking that they should be, but, but here's something to think about, folks. Um, this was the Hummer uh, deduction when everybody went out and bought at a vehicle over 6,000 pounds, the Hummer one. You guys may remember that era, and it was, it was kind of silly. But the reason was is he got this deduction where you could take the you know, $40,000 car price in, in a single deduction up front. You didn't have to capitalize it or amortize it over time. And, and, and in fact, he got the deduction. Um, so what happened is, if you look at the bottom, is that as part of the uh, Economic Recovery Act, this one-time deduction for capital investments was increased to half a million dollars. That's a very large number to take up front. And the idea was to spur uh, capital investment. And, and, and I'm going to, you know, for the sake of argument, let's say that worked. What they're doing on January 1st of 2014 is they're reducing that by 95% down to $25,000. And so that's a huge drop. Uh, now, what, what I want you to do is go to paragraph two and basically the end of sentence one, placed in service. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that. Let me go to the next slide, a little bit more on a 179. What this means for you is over the next six weeks, you need to run, although wait till the end of this webinar, but run, go talk to your small business customers and say, we need to commence the migration now. It, the IRS's position is the um, equipment has to be placed in service before you know the end of the year, but before this $25,000 cap kicks in. The idea is this, can a migration with your services with the software cost and with the computer equipment cost exceed $25,000? Yes, very easily. Is a deduction up front desirable? Yes, time value of money. So, and, and, and what does it mean to place it in service? And we've had some great conversations um, out on the road in our show that, you know, where we landed, but I also have the disclaimer to talk to your CPA for more information, but where we landed is if, Bill, if we, if we buy six Lenovo's from D&H, they arrive and we uh, go through the next, next, next and agree to the Microsoft license and change the background wallpaper to the Seattle Seahawks downloadable football schedule, we consider that to be placed in service. How's that sound, Bill? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the process. I don't know how the IRS okay. feels about it, but I, I love the idea. So, so there you are. So you're going to want to talk to the your CPA, of course. But um, what 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 this means is you are now armed with an economic argument you may not have thought about, where you can go to your customers now and motivate them. And I'm going to talk about duration a little bit later and motivation. But those are my five pillar messages. So just to kind of check off, we we talked about security, we talked about productivity, we talked about functionality. We talked about compliance, and then we talked about the economics. So we're going to move on. Where to go? XP released right after 9-11 in October 2001. So there's a couple pathways, Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. I have a better slide. The skew me baby slide. Now, Jay, that's always worthy of a, a one, one of your magician noises. Go ahead. And the noise is silence. <laughs> which is uh, unusual for Jay. All right, so let's, let's talk about the, 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 the different uh, alternatives. So I'm a pro guy, Windows 8.1 Pro, 7 Pro, um, 13 Pro for Office. Now, it gets a little more exciting with these last three. Office 365, and I have a couple slides that we're gonna walk through this discussion, but Office 365, I use it, I love it, when I get a show, you know, when, when, when I have a show of hands uh, in the audience, people um, in the partner community, 
are using Office 365. I mean, that's kind of the fat client down on C Drive, and for all practical purposes, an Exchange server in the sky, and we could kind of debate link and SharePoint at length. I like it. What people don't like is, is what we know to be true in the partner community is the economics surrounding Office 365. And that's kind of a whole nother webinar because you, you can argue, you know, the markup on software and hardware should only be one component of, of how you make your money. Um, it's really the services and, and the way you add value. Bill, a uh, question for you, and I honestly don't know. Does DNH have an Office 365 SKU as a distributor for its partners? We have several. We have uh, the Small Business Premium SKU that we find fits. Uh, that's a retail box SKU, and we find that that fits a lot of our customers very well. But we also have a number of SKUs that Microsoft just made available in the past 60 days uh, via open license. So yes, there are, there are numerous Office 365 options through distribution that allow the, the traditional partner making profit, selling the SKU to their customer model as opposed to the what was the original Office 365 model. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Whole nother topic, whole nother day, but that's good enough. Okay, virtual desktop or VDI, I put a question mark there because as we live in the real world, um, I, I'm just going to call it like I see it. And, and Jay, maybe, you know, you're, you're welcome to add a, a, a comment from your experience at an MCC event, but the, the way I've seen it is, um, so first of all, the Citrix and virtual desktop type, type technology has been around forever, and it's definitely a home run in a compliance situation. Like my friend who works for the big insurance company called Willis, he has to do that. That is his job. If you work for Willis, you agree to do this, and they do it from a security and compliance point of view. I am also seeing it get traction personally above 50 seats, and, and we'll We'll, we'll still chalk that up clearly to SMB. I'm not seeing it get traction uh, like I would like down around the onesie twosies. And Jay, if you want to make a comment, a uh, brief comment on what you felt you sensed was the sales cycle for virtual desktops at that MCC event you did with Bill Holt. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, where you're what going was long. with that. Yeah, yeah, you said it was the audience. You, you could tell with the audience it was a long sales cycle. So thank you, Jay, for your insight. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no that they're, they're just not interested in, in virtual desktops right now um, because now it's like two devices that they need to manage rather than just one because they, need, they still need a device to access the virtual device. And that, you know, they, uh, we're seeing that people don't want to complicate things. They want to keep things simple. And uh, that's my story. Okay, so let's move on to breakage. Now, this is a legitimate issue in Redmond, and it's an elephant in the room, so, so let's just put it out there. Okay, when you introduce a migration, you introduce disruptions in that ergo breakage. So are there legitimate conversations to be had um, in, in the real world where people are going to go, I'm going to go to MacBook Pro or I'm going to go to Google Chrome? Yes. Is the breakage significant? I would vote no. It's not significant. Jay and I did a uh, one of our workshops down in, uh, Jay, I think it was Mission Viejo, but it's, the Microsoft Store is right next door to the Apple Store. <laughs> no, that was, yeah, that was uh, Century City. Century City. That, yeah. that, 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 that was just a, a, a photograph waiting to happen for Facebook, if, <laughs> if you ask me. So, um, it breakage exists. What I would argue, folks, and again, we keep it real here with our workshops and our webinars, is you know single single percentage point breakage would would be what I would offer. Um, it will in no way be the kind of breakage that unfortunately BlackBerry is experiencing right now with its flight from the phone. So yeah, what what I might add on that, uh, Harry, is um, uh -huh. I don't think Mac is actually capitalizing on the opportunity right now, which is actually to our advantage. I think more people would potentially move over to a Mac out of their frustration with Microsoft. Um, but uh, we're not seeing any movement on Mac side on uh, Apple as it relates to um, going after that market. That's right. That's right. Okay. A couple of quick slides, folks. Uh, we're going to get it all in. 
Um, here's here's a, a, a view of the world that, that I'd like to offer, that I'm just calling it like I see it, um, that we have uh, basically uh, a preference for Windows 7. Now, the exception, and, and I truly believe in this, um, I carry a thing called the Combat Kit on my tour, and I'm going to show it to you. And Now, Windows 8.1 Touch, Windows 8.1 Touch is a game changer. And, Bill, I'd like you to maybe perk up. I mean, on the, on the one hand, the world still adores 7, but, man, there's nothing like Touch on an 8.1 machine. What are you seeing over there? We're seeing that as people are talking traditional desktops, laptops, they're looking, they're looking at 7 Pro, uh, and a lot of that is just fear. Um, when you look at 8.1, some of the changes that, that were made uh, from, from 8 to 8.1, uh, specifically around the, the minimal use start button, the way you can adjust the, the background on the start screen and on the desktop, it's very easy to make Windows 8.1 look and function much like Windows 7. Um, very easy to make your customers comfortable in it. So I, I anticipate more of our customers as they move, they're going to move more towards 8.1 8 than 7. Um, and touch is, is slowly, very slowly, but slowly gaining acceptance in this space. Um, it, it's very natural to use once you start doing it. It's, you know, 20 years ago, people had no idea what they were going to do with the mouse. And now you can't imagine working without one. That's the same kind of thing. You're going to find that I think touch is going to make a, a, a slow growth. but when when you work with Windows 8.1, there is, as far as I'm concerned, there's there's no better interaction, no better no better way to work with the computer. Yeah, and I, yeah. I might add, Harry, that um, I think we uh, we have a uh, subject for a uh, uh, a new tour, and that is touch me, baby, touch me. Okay. Yeah. No. Wait a minute. That's getting close, Jim Morrison. That's a little close to home. All right. So hey, we have some questions. Um, the first one is, uh, we have a message from the audience saying the bottom of the slides are cut off. Um, can my panelists verify, can, are, are you seeing a cutoff on the slides, or could you at least keep, keep me posted if you are? Right, I'll bring it back to a primary uh, monitor. Mm -hmm. if, uh, no, it looks, I'm it looks good it. over here. Yeah, it looks yeah. good okay, over here, right. too. Thank you, folks. Keep me posted. Uh, next question from Larry Doyle. Um, Larry Doyle is saying, uh, da, da, da. so will you consider XP end of life a good opportunity to move to Apple OX 10 or Ubuntu? You, I never get that word. Jay, the Linux, <laughs> the Linux option 13.1. Ubuntu. The Ubuntu. Um, all right. Well, see, I'm from. See, I'm not even allowed to say that word, especially as Microsoft seems intent on uh, taking as much a direct and increase. Larry. Will you consider a good opportunity? Well, you know, Larry, I, I, I realize you may have asked this question before we introduced the breakage topic. And so the, Larry's asking about breakage. Um, you know, I'm a Microsoft guy, so I'm not the best one to answer it. I don't work with Apple or open source. If, if the question is, you know, does that dynamic exist, it does. And again, we just want to put it out there and have the conversation. Next question. Can, can, I, can I jump in there for just a second, yeah, Harry? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, go ahead. Well, we, we've had that question for the past several months from many of our resellers. We've had a couple of guys that have gone in and said, you know, we, we see this as an opportunity. And, and we've seen them coming back burned because, A, they're used to working with Microsoft, so supporting these new products is, is, is a little more of a challenge. But, B, in a lot of cases, they were looking to avoid customer angst by moving from Windows XP to a newer version of Windows, so they elected to take them something to take the customer to something totally different, which gave them even more angst. So, is it an opportunity? Yes. Is it an opportunity for a good thing for you and your business? That's the only you're the only one that can really evaluate that. But is it a good thing for you, your business, and your customer? I, I, I urge you, based on other people's painful experience, look very hard at that before you take a step in that direction. I yeah yeah I would agree. Jay, two, uh, two yeah, second uh, contribution. Okay. Next question from uh, Gene O'Brien. Gene is saying, I strongly recommend moving to 8.1. I just installed a manufacturing plant with 22 Lenovo machines, running eight. And apart from a few days of confusion and figuring out, they love it. It really isn't that bad. It's just different. Wow, Gene, that's almost like a political statement. Now open an affirming community. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question from uh, Ganache is uh, some machines only supporting 
some machines only supporting 32 bits after migration, um, any hardware compatibility issues. Bill, I'm not a super big hardware guy, so the question's 32-bit support on hardware after migration. Uh, based on, on CPU and motherboard designs for the past five, six, seven years, I, I'm not aware of any current hardware that will not support 32-bit. Uh, most of them are, are, designed to, are designed to support both 32 and 64. We see a lot of customers moving to 64-bit for the better performance, but 32-bit shouldn't slow down anything you're doing with your customer. Uh, yeah, okay. we, we also went at the Microsoft event uh, at the Microsoft store in Century City. Um, the, uh, the people there had given us some feedback about the Atom processor as related to uh, uh, old software. Yep. Yep, I remember that. Okay, so folks, uh, next is Office 2003. So, you know, you can view the Office conversation as an attach to make more money and, and have that play out in the, uh, the migration motion, we'll call it. What I want to highlight is over in uh, column four, the Office 365 conversation. Now, if, if we had a live audience, uh, this, is, this is a slide that probably takes more time than it, than, than it deserves because the people really talk about Office 365 and the economic business model. Um, you know, I kind of go with the Microsoft talking points. I mean, I think back when I uh, was had two feet on the ground in the game with small business server, I really didn't make that much money from the resale of small business server or the server machine itself. It, it was always the 150 an hour. It was always the adding value. Um, Bill, you know, you're you're, you're kind of in the heat of this battle. I mean, what any any wisdom or insights on Office 365 and the partner conundrum? From from my point of view, um, Office 365 is, is definitely the smarter way to go. Uh, number one, for, for those customers that are really afraid, uh, really afraid of not having their traditional office, Office 365 includes Office 2013 on-prem. Okay, so if, if, if you've got to do everything on your machines, you've got that. What you've also got is you've got availability to the latest and greatest patches. You've got the, the latest and greatest upgrades. Whatever Microsoft is going to do to, to make Office better going forward, Office 365 is going to have it easily weeks, possibly months, before Office 2013 on-prem products get it. Uh, and then there's the, the, the payment model. You know, In most cases, your customer is going to repurchase Office every time they get a new machine. So. Do, do you want to do three, four hundred bucks every time they get a new machine, or do you want to turn it into a stroke a check for a hundred bucks at you know every year at the same time? Here's your new office license. You've got all this coverage. You've got additional technical support that's going to help you, the VAR. From my point of view, there's there's no way to lose with Office 365. I mean, I, I know it sounds a lot like a company line, but the, the fact of the matter is, looking at it as a VAR, looking at it for what's best for you and what's best for your customer, Office 365 makes the best sense economically and for your business. There you go, Jay. Uh, Two-second comment before I move on. Got to stay on time. Yeah, well, you know, keep it simple, stupid. And uh, 365 gives you so much more bang for your buck, uh, and, and it's the easiest solution. So go with simple. All right. So now we start speeding up, folks. Um, we have... Uh, and I, this is a low rest slide. I apologize. I'm going to fix that this weekend. Darn it! Um, this is sort of the XP migration way, and it's also MIS 101. This is a traditional engagement. So number one, the client hires you. Number two, you arrive at the client, do an assessment. I'm going to talk about that next. Number three, based on the findings in your assessment, you receive client approval for your statement of work to move forward. Number four, procurement. So you purchase the, and we're going to talk about this, you purchase the uh, Lenovo equipment from D&H is something we'd recommend. Number five, the performance. You do the work. You never have trouble with number five. Our guys love doing the work. Number six, the work is accepted by the client. Number seven, there's nothing like the satisfaction of getting paid. Now, this is something you can download today, folks. We put it in the wild. Um, if we have the pleasure of working with you at... Uh, at XP Migrations, um, that's a whole other conversation, but you'll have to use this tool. But if you go to xpmigrations.com and you go to the Join Us page, you can download this Windows XP Migration tool today and start to use it at your customer sites. We insist you do use it at our customer sites 
but it's an assessment tool that runs a scan, a non-invasive scan, and generates a management report. And then it'll actually kick you out to a DNH page um, that I'm going to show you in a minute. This is an older slide where uh, uh, it shows the Lenovo offers, but we, Lenovo goes through distributors, so it actually points to a dedicated DNH page. All right, next issue, application compatibility. This is a legitimate issue. <sighs> All right, I gotta take a deep breath for this one. Um, it's a cheap shot to cry wolf and say, application compatibility. And people will do that up on the Google groups and the Yahoo groups and the news groups and the Facebook groups and so on that, oh, oh, nope, can't talk about XP migrations. We have application compatibility issues. Well, you don't, you don't, and in all likelihood you don't. Um, what we found in our research was if you're over a thousand desktops, yes, yes, you have an application compatibility issue that's legitimate because uh, a company like a, a boom truck manufacturer in Redmond, Washington, I know, has custom apps. They redeveloped it for Y2K. They ran on XP. Then Vista came along and they said, nope, nope, we are not redeveloping for Vista. We did not like that little... UAC or UAE dialog box that pops up every time we try to do something. So now they have April 8th coming up, they got to go to 7 or 8, and they have a mini Y2K. Now, Jay and I have been in conversations at our events where there's always the old-timey bookkeeper, CPA, accountant in the crowd, and he will raise a le very focused, legitimate issue but this issue has been there forever. He will talk about Mass90 or Peachtree um, accounting systems where he still has client data and he needs to have access to that client data. Well, if you go to my second to last point, the way we handle that is just keep an isolated machine. So whatever machine that's on, keep an isolated machine. There, uh, at the midpoint, Windows 7 uh, downgrade or run Windows 7, there historically has been a solution called XP mode that was meant to be sort of a transitory solution. But now I've been advised that um, that will actually not be uh, available for your use after April 8th. So now I'll turn it over to the floor. So Bill, what are you hearing? What do you, what do you know to be true on application compatibility? We are hearing a lot of that same thing. Um, and what, what we're, for, for our customers, Fortunately, a lot of it is around the same kind of thing you're talking about, which can, can simply be opened up to a data migration. So if you've got an old machine, do like you said, isolate an XP machine somewhere, which means it can't talk to the Internet at all. You know, it's, it's got to be completely away from everything. Um, we've also got uh, Windows uh, Enterprise includes four virtualization options. So if you put software assurance on your Windows machines, which you can do on, on an OEM machine within 90 days of purchase, now you have the rights to run four more virtual machines inside that Windows 8 machine. So if you, if you run a Windows 8.1, A, there's a comfort level there that we hope you can get to fairly quickly, but B, if you, if you absolutely had to have XP on a machine, you can put it as a virtual box, and it's very easy. Um, as, as a matter of fact, a little shameless plug here, we're going to have a, a quick how-to about that up on the dnh.com slash solutions lab page um, early next week. On, on using yeah, that, and no, it, yeah. from our yeah, point of view, that's, that's a recommended me. solution. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, get that. Absolutely. Get that to me. Jay, uh, what, uh, what say you on application compatibility? I think I saw your magic tricks are running on 7 and 8, so I, I don't think you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, two things. One is about the whole Peachtree thing. I did a Peachtree migration yesterday. Uh, upgraded them to the latest version of Petri. Everything went uh, smooth, and so you know, it, with the XP, that's that's a non-issue. Um, in some cases, you just need to upgrade the software, and it's not a it's not that complicated. I, I think people are making more out of it than it needs to be, but also with Z install. Uh, they've got a it's called Win Win. Uh, they've got two product lines. One's Win Win, and I'm still testing it. But the concept is that any program that was running on XP will get migrated into a Windows 7 or Windows 8 environment and still work. So I'm testing yeah. that now. Well, and I have your slide. Hold hold that thought. Uh, let's take a couple questions. So. Uh 
Ganesh uh, says, many users have been working with Microsoft XP for close to 10 years. They've had a lot of time familiar with it, dependent upon it, and I don't know, look and feel. Uh, migration from XP to 7 will force users into an unfamiliar environment where they'll have to reset their preferences and relearn the layout. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, l let, me, let me put a wrapper on that, Ganesh, and I appreciate your participation. Um, Tonight, I'm, pr I'm actually pretty excited about this. I'll let the cat out of the bag. Uh, after my workshop tonight in Bellevue at Microsoft on this very slide deck, I'm headed over to the University Microsoft Store. Microsoft Stores tonight are having a midnight pizza event to launch Xbox One. So I'll be there. Woohoo! And get a blog out of it. Now, when was the last time I can recall a Windows of uh, 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 Microsoft? pizza event at midnight, and it was Windows 95. And what I want to say is when we went from Windows 3.1 or 3.11 workgroup to Windows 95, it was the same thing. It, it was the same paradigm shift in terms of the UI and, and the functionality and the features. So um, come on down, join me at a Microsoft store tonight for pizza, and we'll talk it all through. <laughs> Next question is uh, what about printer drivers on a customer network? Always, always a legitimate conversation. We have it too. We have an HP plotter where they stop making the drivers after uh, with XP. And so we do have that one isolated XP laptop where I bring the PDF file over and print it out. Print it out on the plotter. The final question, uh, and that was Brian Sko. Brian Sko, Byron Sko. Thank you. And Jeff Wolf asked, if XP will not be patched after April, how will you be able to use XP mode and virtualization? And my layperson point of view would be that's that's the whole point. Is is that it it it, it I, I don't even know. Bill, bail me out on that one. That's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly the point. As of as of April 9th, Windows XP is Windows XP, um, which means it's going to be unpatched. It, it, if it's a virtual machine, it's it's up to you to make sure that the host machine stays secure enough that nothing gets to that that virtual machine. But if something does and that machine becomes infected and you lose it, it's it's gone. That's one of the reasons that we keep pointing towards migrating off instead of keeping that that one around. If you had to do it, do it. But if you if there's any way around it, bite the bullet and just migrate off of it. What's EOL? Uh, had, a, had, had, a, had an attendee, Jay was in the room, had an attendee on the Sunday of the spring conference at Microsoft Redmond who said, uh, and, and this was relating to the end of life for small business server, but he said, it feels like I'm living with my future ex-wife. And that got quite a, 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 a roar from the audience. Um, all delivered in good form, folks. Just a little humor there. But what I want on this slide is I want you to think about the different definitions. End of life which is kind of what we're going through with Small Business Server now in December 31st when the OEM SKU is no longer sold. And the support, which was technically uh, April 14, 2009 for the original XP, and then end of extended support, which is April 8, 2014. So just some finer points, sometimes on an exam, these kind of things are known to crop up. And this is, in a sense, your study guide. <coughs> Reality check, no further service packs, patch Tuesdays, no shared information with ISVs, OEMs, and zero day forever. With an exception coming up, uh, Microsoft language, what April 8th means, here we go, custom support. The, uh, there is support after April 8th. There is support after April 8th. The problem is, is it's my understanding it's $200 an incident. Now, I was in a meeting at Intel down in Portland uh, two days ago where uh, there, uh, a lady in the meeting, her understanding was it was $200 per um, endpoint in a company. So if you were my friend who's doing a 10,000 desktop migration in Detroit for uh, Avanade, um, a consulting firm, well, 200 times 10,000 is a very large number. I'm researching that, folks. Bill, if you know the answer, bail me out. My understanding is it's $200 per support incident. Do, do, you, do you have visibility into this um, I've, support, paid I've, support? I've, I've heard both, but I haven't dug into it. I can do that, and I'm sure you'll get an answer quicker than I do, but we'll dig around and we'll find an answer. But I've heard both as well. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. And, and the bottom point, why would you support a machine with a book value below $200? I, uh, you better have a, a big ego, folks. You better really, or, or a classic, a classic machine. <laughs> uh, will the deck be available for download? Um, yes, uh, James, I'll get you the deck. I, I, I want to get this out in the wild, and I want to get you guys productive. Exceptions, uh, quickly, we have some better slides coming up, and we are going to go a few minutes over, so I'm going to keep going pretty quickly. Folks, look at column four at the bottom, and look at the date 2015. There are some R2 um, exceptions for server 03. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it does not include SBS 2003 R2, which was released at WPC in Boston in 2005 when they gave out these really cute, and I still have it over here on my trophy shelf. I'm looking at it right now, these launch pails with a big green check. So the R2 release for SBS was green check. Bill, I'm sure you remember it well. And <laughs> green check of health. That's right. They, they had the little lunch pails. I think that was sus or wuss. WSUS or SUS was introduced with R2, or at least an uh, enhancement to that. So that's supported to 15 for these SKUs, unfortunately not small business server 2003. Next slide, please. After April 8th, yes, Windows will continue to run. Chip Reeves from Bigger Brains, one of our friends, is uh, does his annual uh, 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 outreach um, uh, overseas, he volunteers, and he said, you know, over in Africa, when he's doing uh, his goodness, he still sees Windows 95. So, y yes, it, it will boot up. Knowledge nuggets, folks, uh, I'm going to go pretty quick over this because you get the slide deck, but these are some test-taking tips on where um, you might want to spend some time. For example, read the Wikipedia page for Windows XP, know the hardware requirements, um, master uh, licensing, hello, that's a tall challenge. All right, money makers. So I'm doing simple math and I'm keeping it real. All I'm saying is this, folks, is over the next 12 months, and I actually think the long tail opportunity is 24 months, but over the next 12 months, can you go out and procure either an existing customer or find a new customer that has the average small business server size. And I'm, I say on average, you know, for every 2Z, 3Z, you're hopefully going to find a client with 40 units. So on average, 15 units in a small business server um, scenario. Can you do that? Hopefully. I think you can. Do the math. Go with the average service revenue per endpoint at $200. Now, now Jay, as you know, out on the road, uh, you and I have been challenged on this number as being way too low. Agreed? Agreed, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> the opportunity is actually bigger than $200. This is a worldwide number from Microsoft showing for partners it's a $200 per endpoint opportunity. The direct revenue yeah. opportunity is 36000 Add it to your annual income from our salary survey of 100000 you make 136000 Folks, you're not going to be the next 36-month uh, um, MSP millionaire. Not not saying that at all. I'm just saying, do you want to work maybe three or four extra Fridays um, at, along the way, or one one, one Friday a month? Do, do, do you have one day a month? Do you have some time to fit this in to your schedule? And the answer is yes. Um, Jay, hey, do you want to kind of yeah? Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, and I, I want to add uh, one other thing. You know, I, I much prefer when I'm looking at somebody put make-believe numbers of potential opportunities um, low and conservative. And uh, what I like about this is that's very conservative. And so if you use these numbers and you 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 really think more realistically, it's, you know, ten times more than that, five times more than that, you know. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, so good for the numbers being so low and the opportunity looking so good with the low numbers. Okay, I'm getting a note here that the slide's cut off. Um, can you guys see yeah, the uh, fifty thousand dollar? Okay, all right, hold on, gang. I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, a trick. Um, uh, that's that's gang. my job. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> magic. Um, hang on, you guys are seeing the probably the chat screen. That's fine. Let's go to monitor one. Can you see my traditional PowerPoint uh, application now, folks? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Yep. So let me somehow bring this back to slide mode, um, but it wants to go over to the other screen. Stop it. <gasps> I, I, have, right. I have something to say, Harry. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's time. I think it's really important. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right. So, folks, let me, apologies, I'll read the bottom of the slide to you. Um, in the slide mode, it's uh, a little frustrating. Okay, we're back. It, it says, what, it, uh, what is the additional attach? I suggest at least 14,000 more to 50K. Apologies, folks. On this slide, uh, it's the key point. Now, Jay, tell us, uh, you contributed this XP photo. Why don't you do that? Because the slide's pretty self-explanatory about verticals. What is this picture? Yeah, so my wife just had um, hip replacement surgery, and I'm at the hospital. And this is like one of the premier hospitals um, in the country that takes advantage of cutting-edge technology. And this is one of those mobile carts. And I practically uh, passed fainted because I was so shocked to see that all these systems on all the floors um, were XP machines. It's true. It's true. Bill, do you have some data points or sentiments about that? Because uh, if you're, I know you're aware, Bill, but it's it's actually it's true. <laughs> we've we've been telling customers um, for the past year and a half to anything in retail, anything in healthcare, to focus on it. And to, to be quite honest, uh, as part of the solutions team, if nothing else, we're, we're just kind of snobby about. Uh, really, are you you're still using XP? Um, yeah. But I, I, I think the opportunity is there, and it's, it, i got to tell you, I look at your $50,000 number, and I, I see the, the point of the number you're making, but to me, any, any decent-sized firm, unless you're constrained by the size of your organization, there's opportunity out there to make a substantial amount of money. And it's, it's not going to automatically end April 8th. What's, what's going to end April 8th is your, is your opportunity to do that without the panic factor of the, the end user over your shoulder, because that's going to start April 9th. Right. It's, you know what, Bill? No, go ahead. It, I, I was going to say, that's, that's actually, the opportunity. That's my next there. slide, bro. <laughs> right there. Make, make it easy um, on yourself. Get this done before April 9th. Yeah. Yeah, because Bill and I have actually had some chats, and uh, there is a sentiment now um, about the way people behave. And I'm, I'm saying, you know, it, th this, this could be it, from, from the original announcement until the, 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 the day this momentum dies should be at least 36 months. Now, right now, partners are very interested in this message. Customers are, you know, we're sitting here a couple days before Thanksgiving in the U.S., and customer, it's just not top of mind for customers. You know, if anything, they're probably curious about why uh, a couple of the stock indexes are hitting record highs on Wall Street and, and, and things that are just news today. This will become news. Bill, you and I have had this talk. After April 8th, unfortunately, that's human nature. After the deadline passes, we pass the budget. Does that make sense? <laughs> this, well, this I guess it does. Uh, <laughs> no, this is where things are going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, folks, it's, it now is a fantastic time to ramp and deliver, um, but it's going to continue for some time. Future messaging to be developed. Right now, you're seeing a lot of messaging about the scare of the, the, the ADT home alarm sales system. You're seeing scary messages right now. In the future, you're, you're, you're going to see a different set of messaging, and, and we're going to find that messaging. Um, we're all in this together. You know, Microsoft has a get to modern message that, that I, I like personally because it transcends um, borders, if you will, that it, it works before April 8th and it works after April 8th. Um, it's a little generic, but it's it's a pretty good positive message. And I've had conversations. Jay was in on one of these where, 
you know, the MSPs in our audience for this deck have talked about, well, does it really work to do negative advertising? And that's kind of a whole whole another conversation. So I'm going to keep moving because we're at the top of the hour. A shout out, huge shout out to Microsoft Community Connections. This is how you acquire your customer. Um, is that you do these lunch and learns or, or afternoon uh, presentations at a Microsoft store. Microsoft stores have a free training center, and quite frankly, they're pretty nice. And they have even a little headset with a, a sound, so it allows you to have a conversation with your customers, even though you you know have the noise of a store in the background. But please search engine, search Google, Microsoft Community Connections. That's what we're actually using is an event engine from Microsoft to connect us with venues and connect us with influencer organizations. And the influencer organizations are such that um, they help with the audience acquisition. So, for example, you can do a lunch and learn for uh, literally the Las Vegas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Microsoft will help facilitate that process within reason and connect you with an influencer organization, and, and that really helps with audience acquisition, let me tell you. So shout out to that. I'm going to keep moving. Migration Madness. Jay, you got two minutes on Z install, sir. This is your ba This is your slide, Jay. <laughs> All right, yeah. I've actually uh, been working with them, had some more communications in the last week. And uh, they've got two products. One is uh, uh, Win XP7, which has to do with if you're running XP and your client, as from my perspective, this is where I add my own uh, interpretation. And they really don't want to uh, go through everything that they may need to go through to get off of XP, but they need to begin the process. You can use this XP7 migration to move the whole system over to a new uh, computer, it's either Windows 7 or Windows 8, and you basically have a virtual XP environment running on the Windows 7 machine. My experience with it is, though, if there's some tweaking you need to do and doesn't function that well, uh, so the preferred way is to do the win-win option. Now, the, the thing that you need to keep in mind when you're pricing this out to your client is that there's a license for each. Um, you, you don't buy it once and use it on 100 computers. Now, there are, they do have different licensing uh, where you can do some more bulk stuff. But on a simple level, you want to become a reseller for them so you can get a better discount on the pricing. And you're looking at about $100 per uh, usage. And they're one of our partners in this whole process. Other tools that are out there, Jeff Wolf's asking other tools. Um, Jeff, we'll, we'll probably do a follow-up webinar on, on some of the more technical aspects. So forgive me that we're going to move on from this slide, but Jeff Wolf's asking. And, um, PC Mover coming out of uh, Traveling Software Laplink out of North Seattle is another tool. Parallels used to have a tool. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. Disruptions caused by migrations. Jay? Find us a good scary noise while I go get my combat <laughs> kit open. All Count right, let's see. One. Let's see. Here are we. Here we're a scary noise. Okay. All right. Now. All right. Now we're into the meat of the the deck, folks. Uh, we're going to move pretty quickly as always. So, what? Um, Bill's going to talk to you about, and we'll get some comments from Jay on the Lenovo Combat Kit. So let me just kind of show that to you up front. I'll make a few comments. But what you're going to hear in the background is I am dropping the twist computer from six inches. So here we oh, go. Oh, I hate that. Don't Jay, do it. <laughs> could you hear that? Could you hear that? When we say Combat Kit, um, Lenovo... Quite frankly, I think they should highlight this more. These are military-grade computers with uh, Gorilla Glass. <laughs> and every time we do our workshop and we start dropping computers, you're right, Jay, people freak out like the sound of uh, scratching a, chalk, a chalkboard with your fingernails. Um, Bill, uh, we have the offer page that comes up about how to acquire the combat kit. Um, basically, the slide is, is pretty self-explanatory, but you know, you're you're a big combat kit guy. What say you? 
I say the combat kit is the biggest value a VAR can, can, can find in any of the 50 states or half a dozen countries around us. The, the, the amount of hardware that you get for less than $4,000 um, is, is just insane. And the fact that it's, it's personalized and tweaked to make it even easier to demonstrate the value of uh, both Windows 8 um, or 8.1 if you upgrade the machines and uh, the, the hardware itself is unbelievable. If your customer doesn't get the idea of the value of touch on 8 or you haven't you haven't messed with it yourself and we understand a lot of our VAR partners haven't done that, you'd be crazy not to try this. Seriously. Um, yeah, and, and I would add dozens of the things and then everyone is yeah. happy with them. And I, and I would add that uh, we had a conversation with Lenovo and um, they will refresh uh, the equipment in the uh, combat kit which makes the investment uh, well worth it because you'll always have up-to-date stuff um, and that's just changes the the idea from buying something that's like oh crap I'm making this investment and it's obsolete and um, you, you didn't get your money out of it but this way they or they've actually thought it through and have said look we'll, we'll refresh this kit for you because we know that it's a great tool and every time we've taken that stuff out at the different events we've done people have just been so appreciative of being able to touch and have hands-on experiences with this stuff it, it, it's, it's really funny it's not a matter of do I buy Lenovo it's a matter of okay now which Lenovo do I buy yeah because you've got them right there in front of them and, and, and you're right about the uh, the refresh. Once people understand there's a pathway to stay current, so the kit will stay current. Folks, if you go to my webpage uh, or check my newsletter the other day, I just interviewed Chris Fry over at uh, Lenovo, on a quarterly chit chat, and he announced there will be a server side combat kit coming out. So. A um, couple of couple of cool. Th I mean, they they hit a home run with the kit idea. It's in a red Clydesdale box with wheels, so it's you can ship it by air. You can wheel it into the law firm, and when you open it up, it makes this little presentation kiosk. So quickly. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you is I got two teenage boys, and I have the combat kit on loan to me for the tour. And on the weekends, they're using this. So so first of all, you can use the equipment. It doesn't just sit. You can use it, and um, it's kind of cool, you know. It's kind of father-son time, by golly, you know. Here I have a combat kit, and their friends come over and play with it, and I'm I'm all for that because I want it tested. Now, moving right along, we have the X1 Carbon, which is a competitor to, in my opinion, um, the the size, shape, and weight of the Apple uh, Airbooks. So, so people, are, I, it, it's it's uh, uh, I, I consider an executive machine certainly amazingly capable, but this is kind of the answer to the smaller laptops that are in the market. And in my opinion, it's it's the answer to Apple. Bill, uh, one minute on the X1 Carbon if, if you have something to add. Okay, Bill saying he has to run to a meeting. Aha, he's a busy man. All right, the twist. Jay, we'll go through this a little quicker than usual because this is usually the in-person workshop where we could really go through this. The twist, as you can see, makes a tablet and it makes a tent. Um, the tent is really cool when you're presenting at a lunch table like TGIF Fridays where the spinach dip and the salad and the fries and the hamburger have um, have uh, taken up the entire desktop, but you still want to present something to your client with touch. The Helix is really cool. The Helix is kind of like a surface. It, it, look closely at the photo, folks. The tablet detaches from the keyboard unit. Both have batteries, so you can have a tablet. You can have a very capable ThinkPad um, uh, laptop. And so on a plane, you don't need to carry an Amazon Kindle and a laptop. Basically, you can carry one device. What I like about it is it has the form factor of a netbook. Um, so it, it's just right below that little hook of death on an airline seat that the larger form factors get their screens crushed, the little tray lever, and the person in front of you puts their seat back too fast. Finally, we have the Tablet 2, and I would offer its claim to fame as the uh, advanced Intel process processor as well as the ports, the ports. Think about USB ports. Think about the ports. 
Again, this tends to be what we do in person. Jay, uh, two minutes if you want to add a couple of comments on the combat kit ingredients. Yeah, well, it gives you a, a nice selection of options. If you're if you're a person that uh, doesn't care about tablets, you, well, you've got a traditional uh, model of a touch screen um, laptop with the uh, Carbon X1, and then you have two different versions of what I call the convertibles with the uh, with the Twist and with the Helix, and um, and then of course you've got your your tablet um, and all of these products are made really sturdy and that's part of uh, what Lenovo is known for that they make this stuff so it's not a, it's not a toy it's not going to break quickly all and right of course we've got the tiny yeah one minute on the tiny this is actually your photographer that's your bike jersey on um, picture two in the upper left, by the way. Um, okay, talk to us about the tiny. The, and, and Shane, let me let me set the table. The point is, guys, the desktop is still very much alive. I'm constantly surprised in the demand for desktops. Jay, talk to us about the tiny. Yeah, and I, my my goal is to get Lenovo to include a tiny in the combat kit because uh, when we presented this in Temple City, you know, I, I was like, look, I'm bringing a tiny with us even though it's not in the combat kit because I think there's a conversation to be had. And people, you know, they were they were surprised uh, when they saw it and uh, very interested in it as an option rather than going with a laptop. I think some clients uh, say, look, I, I don't want a laptop. I want a, you know, quote unquote desktop computer. And this uh, can be mounted to the back of the monitor, creates a nice clean environment, and it's a nice powerful laptop the size of, uh, I think, four golf balls uh, side by side. So it's nice and small and uh, powerful. It is. It is. All right. Moving right along, folks. Call to action. Bill had to run to a meeting. Um, uh, and I'm getting some questions. So... Uh, I will, uh, folks, I'll get to your questions at the end. Call to action. So you're going to get uh, an email from me tomorrow. And this is a dedicated link for everything we do with uh, DNH and Lenovo. So it's dnh.com forward slash XP migrations. This is where you can purchase the combat kit. This is where you can participate in special offers related to SMB Nation. Um, you'll get the link. All right, Uma, Jay, this is your slide, sir, in the context, folks is that, and, and this is really why we're here, and people really appreciate this conversation, is we are introducing disruption into the business with a migration, so it puts everything on the table. Jay, that's the handoff, grab the ball. All right, yeah, well, actually, when you first started uh, saying we're going to include uh, UMA uh, uh, and a voice over IP uh, solution in the tour, I was like, really? I, I was like, um, didn't think that was a, a good idea, and I was totally shocked by the response by the audience uh, at the Temple City Chamber of Commerce, and you know, in subsequent uh, events, there people were like real. They're they're ready to have that uh, voice over IP conversation with small businesses, and the Uma solution is nice and clean and simple. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. So, folks, basically this. Um, you're going to get some information in the follow-up email, so I'm not going to completely bore you in this. And in the in-person workshop tonight at the uh, uh, Lincoln Square in Bellevue, Washington, if you're around, hit me offline, and uh, I'll tell you how to get to that. We have pizza thrown in. But basically, we go into a richer conversation about voice and data, and then um, Uma is uh, – basically uh, owns, for lack of a better way to put it, the one to five market. And so, you know, sure, if, if you have a larger client, you're going to look at different telecom solutions, and, and we know that, but this fits very well with our segment. Carbonite, same story. So people are like, you know, okay, Carbonite, what's, what's the conversation here? Well, there is a conversation. As you go through the whole migration motion, you start asking questions. As, as part of your analysis. Well, what about? What if? Can we try? We should do this. Can Jenny work from home? Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and, and as you get deeper and deeper and deeper into it, conversation becomes, what are we going to do with the data now? 
now that we're migrating away from XP and essentially uh, turning the organization upside down with a IT paradigm shift, can we take a look at some storage solutions we may not have considered in the past, i.e. cloud storage. And much like UMA, I'd like to offer, and much like DNH, I'd like to offer they own the small business space. Um, today, Carbonite doesn't have a conversation for you, although uh, there was a press release this summer that there will be a future conversation about robust server-side backup. Uh, so, so I'm just going off with what I know, and I think it was a July press release. But today, Carbonite kind of owns consumer, and they kind of own small business in terms of backup. So it's a very different conversation from, say, I'll offer our friends over at StorageCraft, which, which God bless them, and, and, and they have a, a separate server-side robust conversation. So that's why you would take a look at Carbonite. Now, the way it fits in with XP migrations, and Brooke, we're about to get to you, um, the way it fits in is, is when you work with us on assignments, that, that uh, opportunities that, that we come up with, these are the recommendations we're going to make as part of the conversation. So we're going to say, what about phone systems? What about backup? And that's why this all fits in the disruption of a migration conversation. Um, Jay, does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. No, absolutely it makes sense. Of course it makes sense because, you know, the other thing is when you get in front of a, a, a client, you need to give them the big picture and you need to advise them. Uh, and, you know, my conversations that I've been having with my clients in the last week or two have been very interesting because they're like, you know, I really don't know what to do and thank God I've got you because, uh, you know, you're looking at the big picture for me and that's what I need. I need somebody that can advise me and so this way when I do make any changes or moves like you were talking about with disruption, we can look at everything and, and get it all done at once rather than, oh gee, I'm, I'm going to do this now and then I'm going to disrupt my my operations again further on down the road and then that's where it's a little finesse is important because you have to have the conversation but you don't want to scare them either. Well, diplomacy is always welcome, Jay. <laughs> I'm, I'm now, still working on that. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but you're getting better. Um, with that said, with diplomacy always being welcome, what, what I would offer is this, folks, is that um, the great fortunes are made during periods of disruption. We are in one of those periods. If you're a, a student of history, you would recall books on uh, wartime fortunes, the military industrial complex, and yada, yada, yada. Just ask the Boeing company how to make money during periods of disruption. This is a very similar motion, and you can capitalize on that, okay? And, and quite frankly, this is a lot friendlier motion than the aforementioned example. Now, moving along, the, the part of the ecosystem element that we always forget is training. So I'm frustrated at myself that we use uh, Salesforce.com as our CRM system, and I feel I know about 10% of it. It's a glorified gold miner act application for me, and I know it does a lot more. So Chip Reeves of Bigger Brains, who's one of our partners on this whole thing, um, we have an MSP offer. So if you work for us, we're going to recommend that you build in training. Imagine that, Jay, <laughs> one of the highest <laughs> ROIs in both income and productivity is additional education. Um, folks, what I'll do, I won't do it now, but uh, what I'd like to encourage you to do is go to xpmigrations.com and play the three-minute video that we created with Bigger Brains, and you'll see that Chip has a really user-friendly style or genre to his videos to convey training. So that's biggerbrains.com with a hyphen. With that said, I'm going to keep moving right along. XP Migrations is a new co-op, we like to think co-op, and I'll tell you why, that matches uh, SMB Nation partners with Windows XP clients to do migration work. It's that simple. We in no way compete with you. We're not taking money. We're trying to give you money. All we're saying is that we're having some conversations um, out in the hither and yon that, that possibly you're not having, and we're acquiring customers and, and, and finding work. And it's very simple. Would, would you like to go do a four-hour gig next Friday? Would you like to do a three-week gig in Detroit? 
would you like to do a three-day gig in San Francisco? The answer can be yes, and the answer can be no. That's okay. We're, we're just trying to do a couple of things. We're trying to help uh, Microsoft and Lenovo and, and all the ecosystem partners with the Windows XP migration matter, and then we're trying to help you make money. And we have a little fun along the way. So we came up with X points. So let's say that you make $10,000 off us, you get 10,000 X points, and we have a little store full of gadgets uh, from some of our sponsors that have donated, like Jabra and Uma and so on. And, and so you can go shopping and get gadgets, and it's kind of cool. Jay, the, 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 the funny thing is, I, I, I can never resist a good joke. I actually do have a fairly good supply of BlackBerry Z10 phones to choose from as well. Now, folks, they work. They work fine. They, they're actually $800 uh, phones, so they're, uh, they're, they're, they're quite sophisticated. Brooke, come on board. You've been very patient. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I've been listening the whole time. So, so Brooke, why don't we walk through this slide together? And thank you mm -hmm. for joining us, uh, Brooke from XPMigrations.com. Mm -hmm. This is Brooke's job. So, uh, you know, Brooke, why don't, why don't you take a stab at these talking points about what, what we're trying to do as part of our screening process, part of your recruiting process. T let's talk about expert talent, please. Sure. Um, oftentimes, I will get their information through the XP Migration site. They'll fill out a Join Us application, and then I'll give them a call, and we'll have a conversation on the phone about their skill set, exactly what they're looking for, and then I will direct them to the Work Market um, website where they fill out an application there. And then I always try to get over study materials because it is a very difficult test. You have two chances to be able to pass it, and that is our filtering process other than me having a conversation with the talent themselves. And I have had some great connections with people that have you know, wanted to get hired by us. And we've got a, a great women, great men out there that are ready. They're ready for some customers. Absolutely. So uh, uh, th thank you. And you, you'll be hearing from Brooke. Um, that's part of Brooke's job is to follow up with you probably within the next week. Brooke, be sure to give these good people a call on Thanksgiving Thursday and Black Friday. How about that? I will do that. <laughs> I will do that right around lunchtime. I'm sure that's when everybody will be yeah. sitting down to eat. Yeah, that sounds great. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You'll hear from Brooke. Okay, so expert talent folks, you guys have 12 to 15 years experience in the game with Small Business Server. We know this. You pass our assessment. We do a background check, and I've got a whole lot of context surrounding that, but, but I'll give you the very short version of it is our biggest competitor, quite frankly, it's, it's not you. It's not uh, the MSPs. It's not the large consulting firms. Our biggest competitor is Craigslist because the small business owner says, well, I'll just go up on Craigslist. Well, here's the problem. There's no screening on Craigslist. People don't um, always honestly represent themselves on Craigslist. It has that reputation. But that is literally our biggest competitor. And we're trying to engage in some fairly in-depth screening to protect you and protect the customer. So that's why we have a background check. Uh, we have a toolkit. So the assessment tool, the Z install, et cetera. We have online and in-person training. So tonight in Bellevue at Microsoft is the on-site training. Today was the online training. We have the co-op dividend, the X points to get gadgets. And then finally, 110% guarantee. And I always use this part of the, uh, the webinar, the lecture, to say, steal that from me. Use that in your language. Go forth and multiply and eradicate XP. That's, that's a big part of why we're here today. And offer 110% guarantee to customers to stand behind your work. And also word it in such a way that I, I would encourage you to word it that it limits your liability to the customers. So you're saying that, you know, look, we're, we're humans and we're dealing with computers and the basic uh, agreement is our liability is limited to 110% of the job. So I would encourage you to borrow that. Bonus, we have peer groups. I'll leave that up for a moment um, and answer some questions. We are at the end of the webinar. Folks, the questions are uh, the cost to refresh um, the kit, uh, David Grinder. David Grinder, there will be a buyback program from Lenovo. I don't know the cost to refresh. We have Kit uh, asking, does Lenovo have on-site warranty 
like Dell Pro support, and that's from Kit. Jay, you're an active Lenovo reseller. Can you help me answer that question about on-site support from Lenovo? Yes, um, uh, I believe so, I, I, and I will double check that. But um, what I recommend to my clients is uh, one of their warranty services that's three years with priority support, and I believe that includes on-site. Okay, and finally, Anthony Logan is asking, uh, how much are the kits? And Anthony, at D&H, back at that one site, the referral site, which I'll go back to real quick, there we go, uh, forward slash XP migrations, they are $3,999. And it, you know, it's, it's, I don't know what to say. It's, it's truly a value. It's over $6,000 worth of goods that you can use today, plus the air freight box, plus the little pop-up kiosk display. Um, what, what, what can I tell you? You know, maybe I'll end on my tip of the day is uh, capitalize on what the Bainbridge Island um, Public Library did. They have Saturdays where they call it petting zoos, technology petting zoos. Talk to your local library, have a petting zoo. The combat kit would be perfect for that. Does that make sense, Jay? Does that make sense, Brooke? Yes. That goes back to my my conversation about having a uh, the subject of a uh, uh, tour about Touch Me. Oh, Jay, stop it. <laughs> stop it now. <laughs> well, we can't beat that, folks. We're going to end on that note. Thank you so much. I warn you we go a little bit over today. We went 90 minutes instead of 60. That's about what the workshop is. Uh, and so, um, again, check our calendar at xpmigrations.com under events. We're coming to a city near you for both the partner and the customer side. Thank you so much for attending. You'll be receiving a thank you email from us. Jay, take us out with a noise. All right. Well, <laughs> well I think it's more the wisdom of SMB Nation <laughs> and what you guys bring to the table and that everybody should know that SMB Nation is always... There you go. All right. Have a great day, folks. Thank you so much.